is always taken for granted. But how is it achieved today? The words electronics and automation are common now. But in railroading, at least, their use is tied to the even more vital element of constructive imagination. Here is how those three, electronics, automation, and imagination, speed New York Central trains down the rails in incredibly complex maneuvers never possible before. Speed, safety, economy. These are the goals and the results of the New York Central's massive improvement program. Let's examine three giant steps New York Central is taking to achieve these ends. Problem, how to maintain both freight and passenger service on minimum trackage, but with maximum efficiency, with better service for our customers than ever before, and a more profitable operation for our stockholders. Solution. Electronics apply to traffic control on a vast scale. Here is the most modern centralized traffic control. New York Central SynchroScan system, now in operation between Cleveland and Buffalo. This control panel is part of a six and one quarter million dollar project which involved comprehensive changes in track, roadbed and signals, and which resulted in the largest two-track centralized traffic control installation in the world. This machine is one of two located in Erie, which makes it possible for dispatchers to have complete control of the entire territory between Buffalo and Cleveland. Included on the panel is a track diagram of the control territory. On this diagram is shown the location of every train and how switches and signals are positioned. The dispatcher can even turn on electric snow melters many miles away. These giant brothers of the burners in an electric range speedily dispose of snow and ice that might interfere with switch operation. An automatic recorder on the control machine provides a permanent record of each train's progress. On the chart from the train recorder, each diagonal line is a train. The intersection of the two lines marks the time and place at which the two trains passed. Let's watch now as the dispatcher handles a typical situation with this control system. On the panel, he sees an eastbound freight moving east of Erie on track two. At the same time, he sees that the fast Empire State Express, also running on track two, is rapidly gaining on the freight ahead. To avoid any delay to the Empire State, the dispatcher decides to switch the Empire State from track two to track one at Harbor Creek and run the Empire around the freight with no loss of time to either train. The diagram shows that the switch at Harbor Creek is lined up for track two. The switch must be operated so that the oncoming Empire will be switched to the other track. The dispatcher controls the switch by the simple turn of a knob. Then a complex system of electronics and relays goes into instant action. And so the Empire easily swings from track two to track one overtakes and passes the freight with no loss of scheduled time to either train. Now the dispatcher, aware from his control panel that the express is now well ahead of the freight, smoothly returns it to track two at northeast. This operating flexibility, duplicated at 40 strategic locations, enables the dispatcher to steer trains past each other with maximum efficiency. The facility thus available with two tracks makes it possible to remove 221 miles of third and fourth track like that shown here. This means not only substantial savings, but also provides valuable rails and other material for use elsewhere. Thus, with SynchroScan traffic control, passenger trains maintain high speed schedules while the speed of freight trains is almost doubled because they now move in either direction on high speed tracks formerly reserved for passenger traffic. And this is only the beginning, the first completed step in a program which will ultimately provide the advantages of modern electronic railroading to the New York Central system and its patrons all the way from New York to Chicago and St. Louis. 
While a pattern for electronized central traffic control and modern signaling expedites freight movement, much more is needed. And much more has been provided by New York Central planners. Since railroading began, the problem of classifying freight cars was met by gravity. Gravity plus manpower. Today, gravity, of course, still works, but works with a new ally, automation. These are the New York Central Buffalo Yards, the frontier yards. Here, the Central has opened a new era of precise, dependable car handling, which cuts classification time by more than two-thirds for faster service to the railroad's patrons. Stretching for over two miles along the main line, Frontier Yard comprises receiving, departure, and classification yards and many auxiliary functions. Let us see how these are used to get cars delivered sooner. Large receiving yards with over 28 miles of track permit trains to move in without delay. This switchman throws switches electrically to route incoming trains to the proper receiving tracks. Hand switching delays are eliminated. Trains move in without stopping. Car initials and numbers, important for classification and for shippers' information, are read off into a microphone as the cars pass and are recorded at a central car record office. Thus, even before the train comes to a stop on the receiving track, its complete consist has been checked and is a matter of record. Another example of time saving at Frontier Yard. Meanwhile, switching lists are prepared from the recorded information and are flashed by teletype to all points concerned. The long string of cars is moved into position for switching. The locomotive pulls the cars back from the receiving yard and then reverses to start the steady push up to the crest of an artificial hill, or hump as it is called, down which the cars coast onto classification tracks. The crest of the hump is only about 18 feet high, yet this is enough to roll a car to the far end of the classification yard. To switch a car to any of 63 tracks, the hump conductor simply presses a numbered button. Illuminated track numbers permit him to check that correct buttons are pushed. As the cars advance down the hump, the numbers advance. As each button is pushed, the route is stored in an electrical memory system. After each car passes over a switch, the electrical memory operates automatically to position the switch for the route of the next car. No human attention is needed. Cars must roll fast enough to go onto their classification tracks and couple, but speed must be carefully controlled. Too slow means delay. Too fast means hard coupling. At Frontier Yard, a precision electronic system provides control beyond human capabilities. Car retarders on the hump and at the entrance to each group of tracks regulate car speeds. Steel jaws on the retarder are driven by an electrical mechanism which squeezes them together against the wheels of passing cars. The retarders are extremely powerful. If need be, they can actually stop the heaviest car and hold it indefinitely. Frontier Yard, with its electronic automation and auxiliary facilities, handles all kinds of cars and all kinds of loads swiftly and surely through the classification process. This one yard by itself does the work that formerly required eight scattered yards and does it over 300% faster than was possible before. The potential for increased profit is even more tremendous. Now on the departure track, a locomotive is coupled onto cars that arrived only a few hours earlier. The powerful road diesel, fueled and serviced, is all set to haul the long train on to its destination. The locomotive buckles down to its job. Once more, the cars are moving. Out of the yard and onto the main line, freight is again on its way. Freight's on the rails. But how to meet the ever-increasing challenge of freight which travels the highways from door to door? Another problem, one which bids best to be solved by a welding of motor transport convenience and rail economy. New York Central's revolutionary Flexivan service. As the demand for more than depot delivery grew, the piggyback combination was a resourceful but cumbersome answer. Now comes Flexivan, the New York Central service where short-haul van is transferred automatically to long-haul transport. Here, special vans made for New York Central by Fruhoff ease their entire load, van and all, directly onto the car. 
here, a full load of 42,000 pounds has been put on the prototype of New York Central's new Flexivan flat car. Flexivan unloads right off the ground, directly onto the train. It needs no specially built loading platform. And the flat car can be sitting in any part of the yard, on an angle or even a hill. They're locked fast in this operation. It's simple, efficient, automatic. Once the van is fully off the wheels and onto the flat car, it can be swung around easily, all 42,000 pounds of it. Here you see it being done. The wheels remain, ready to go into immediate action with another van. The rear wheel assembly remains stationary while the van slides onto the flat car, ready to roll again after shedding the van. With the flexor van centered over the flat car, a self-locking hydraulic hoist attached to the deck takes the van's weight and lowers it from either side of the flat car. Front and rear of the van are positioned and then lock into place automatically, like this. Completely eliminating the costly tie-down expedience of piggyback. The saving in time which Flexivan achieves is remarkable. Complete switchover from trailer truck to freight car or back, ready to roll, takes a total time of only four minutes. And in the near future, New York Central will inaugurate Flexivan service to key points along the road. What does it all add up to? Simply this. The New York Central is on the move, fully in tune with the transportation demands of today taking full advantage of each new technique which becomes available. Its improvement program paces speed, economy, safety, and profit.